All right, y'all, guess what time it is? It's time to go through an applied lab and put together everything we've just learned in the last few sections. Let's go ahead and log into our Kali machine. Okay. First things first, we're going to play around with Burp Suite again. But this time, we're not going to get as much help as we did last time. So let's go ahead and log into Firefox. And remember, we want to set our proxy set preferences. Scroll down to the bottom and go to network settings. Select settings. Let's enter our local host IP. 8080 and make sure we use this for all other protocols. Select OK. Go ahead and start Burp Suite. Next, start burp. Give that a while to start up. And we are going to send this password reset for Jane Smith, right? It's going to be sent to jsmith at email.foo for Jane Smith. All right, so let's go to the proxy tab first. Intercept is on. Okay. Let's go ahead. Go to that site. Okay, we are trying to help Jane Smith get back into her account. She's locked out. So we're sending this reset to her alternative email account. We can see the request here. Let's go ahead and forward it. Let's go to HTTP history. You can see the get request here. Let's go ahead and send that to the repeater. Let's go over to the repeater under parameters or params, params. We're going to change this to something malicious. Why? Because we can. We're intercepting all of this traffic. Let's enter. Right click this line. All right, hit request in browser in the original session. I'm just gonna select this so I can copy it automatically. Go back to Firefox. Paste that here. Okay. We already know this is not gonna load, but let's go back to, to Burp. What email address is the password reset attempt now being sent to? This bad guy here. Okay, let's right click this. And let's save it. Make sure you save it to your desktop. And we're gonna save it as alt email.
Which of the following answers best describes the task you accomplish? Intercepted and altered a password reset attempt, preventing the user from knowing the password. Intercepted an email password, cracked the password. Oh, intercepted and altered a URL so that the password reset information was sent somewhere else. Right. Cool thing about Burp Suite. Definitely play around with this some more. But you remember that it's a, it's a great tool to start practicing how to intercept packets, proxies, proxy traffic with, and manipulate that traffic, manipulate that data, potentially for some malicious, malicious gains. Okay, but definitely use it for educational purposes. Let's go over to our domain controller now. And we're going to play around with the stress test. Go ahead and log in with me. The first thing we're going to do is open up the task manager. So right click the taskbar, task manager. Let's go to performance. Okay, and let's also open the performance monitor. Okay, so let's open this task manager. I mean, server manager, go to tools, come down to performance monitor. All right, we wanna create a new data collector set. So select data collectors. It, wait, let me open this up. Select user defined and go to new data collector set. This is the name. Make sure we select manual because we want to add some performance counters. Hit next. Let's add our performance counters. Remember they are going to be part of the processor group. It's the first one selected, cool. We want to add processor time. Since I see it, oh, and user time, I see both. I can add both of them. Make sure you have these three. Select OK. Let's go next and finish. Okay. Now we have that set. You can see it here. Gonna minimize this, minimize this. See normal CPU usage right now. Let's go to lab files, sys internals, and let's run the CPU stress test. Okay. Let's create one new thread. So hit this gear icon with the green plus button. We have five. We're going to select all, set the activity level to medium, all right? If we do maximum, we may just crash the system. So set it to medium. And then activate. And we can see the CPU just start going crazy. We're going to stop it because don't want this server to crash right now. Deactivate. Deactivate all of it. <laughs> cool. All right, so we saw the CPU uses had spiked to 100 and it's now back down to, to two. Look at the spike here in this graph. It just went up like crazy and dropped. Okay, let's go back to performance monitor and we are going to stop that baseline and right click it and hit stop. Oh, I never started it. It's not good. Or we were supposed to start it, but it's okay. We can do it again. Let's start it. 
Just highlight all of this. Activate the stress test. You can see the CPU usage went right back up. Right, deactivate, computer is moving slow. Now, let's go over here and stop it. Now, let's go ahead and stop it. Right click it again. You can view the latest report. Which of the following answers best describes why a performance baseline is essential to security? Performance baselines prevent server performance issues due to security breaches. Without a baseline of normal activity, it is difficult to know when the server deviates from the normal. That's a good answer. Performance baselines alerts administrators to malware and viruses. Not necessarily true. Performance baselines prevent the server from operating below an established work level. This isn't true. I like this answer the best. All right, we can close all of this. And let's go to the next section. All right, and harden our PowerShell security. We're still on domain controller. So I'm just gonna close this, close this, close this. And I'm gonna open up the server manager. Let's go to our group policies. Okay, and we're gonna create a new GPO again, right? What are we creating the GPO for? To lock down our PowerShell. Okay, so let's go ahead and right click this, create a GPO. We're right clicking this domain name, if you don't remember. Create a GPO. This is the name, hit okay. All right, let's go to the GPO and edit it. All right, now follow me. We're going to policies, administrative templates, Windows components, and we're going to look for Windows PowerShell. Now, what do we want to do here? We want to enable all right, logging here. Let's enable that and hit OK. And here, we want to enable this to only allow what? Signed scripts. Okay, we want that execution policy set. Let's close this out. Let's go ahead and right click on this GPO, save the report to the desktop. Because remember, we're going to get scored for it. Desktop, save, score. And let's go ahead and open up PowerShell. And we're going to run it as administrator. And let's update our GPO. We're gonna run this twice, okay? Run it again. And once that is successful, we're going to get the status here, see what we are reporting, and we are reporting all signed as we should. Good job, good job, good job, good job, good job. You all are doing great. All right, which of the following answers best describes why URLs are vulnerable to interception and alteration? 
users mistype URLs, Burp Suite decrypts URLs. URLs are not encrypted. Which of the following answers best describes how a performance baseline helps to maintain the security of a server? Performance baselines prevents the server from deviating from its normal levels. No, it does not prevent that. A performance baseline does not contribute to the server security. Increased performance is a possible result of a security breach, really? <laughs> Degraded performance is a possible result of a security breach. Which of the following answers best describes why digitally signed Windows PowerShell scripts help to mitigate security threats? Digitally signed scripts are checked against the database that track known good scripts. That is false. Digitally signed scripts help to ensure that scripts come from a trusted source. That's a good answer. Digitally signed scripts only run on the server where they were originally signed. That's not true. Digitally signed scripts are encrypted for confidentiality, preventing hackers. That's not true. All right, y'all. This is what I love about the Applied Labs. We get to go ahead and use what we learned, use the hands-on experiences that we're learning, the same hands-on experiences that are gonna make us market ready the same hands-on experiences that we are going to use to become assets and effective assets on the job. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you had a favorite section in here or something that you want us to go over in details, maybe in class, leave it in the comment sections and we will get back to you. Thank you.